Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna go through Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions uh, as we go through it, generally related to three different topics, wealth building, commodities, and or financial topics. So let's dive in there. Let's take a look and see what people are sharing. Uh, if you wanna follow me, it's at Finding Your Square Finance. And if you wanna join our community, Finding-value.com is where I dive deeper into these topics, deeper into uh, the individual companies and how to play this commodity bull market that we have entered. So coming down to Z4 Energy Research, natural gas power burn. Power burn is the electrical generation uh, from natural gas. So electricity generation is at 41% of the share of the United States in the first quarter of 2024. <clears throat> it was 35% in the first quarter of 2022. Coal-fired generation at 15% versus 21% in 2022. So um, nat gas is stealing market share away from coal in the United States for electricity generation. It is the largest contributor to electricity uh, for power generation. It is natural gas by a long shot. Um, we've got nuclear there. <clears throat> nuclear has also uh, come down from 19% to 18% is what I see here. And then we've got, here's the pie location, nuclear 19, natural gas 41%. So coming down, we got Peter Croft. He says, out, down 45%, greatest four-year, 30-year Treasury loss in over a century. So 30-year U.S. Treasury total return index since 1919, and we've got a 45% loss since April of 2020, which is the greatest four-year loss in over 100 years in the bond market. And what that deals with is your interest rates, inflation and interest rates, and people wanting our bonds, combination of those, all those things. Uh, Kevin Graham says there's six proposals for data centers in Alberta, Canada. So um, this is natural gas demand. And if they all went ahead, these facilities would consume about 2,000 megawatts of electricity. With most projects refined through the approval process, said Ryan Schofield, uh, ASO's manager of load forecasting and market analytics. The VARCO, there's three large AI data centers, have been proposed for the Langdon, High River, and Spruce Grove areas, each needing up to 400 megawatts of electricity. Massive data centers worth billions are coming and Alberta wants to lead Canada in attracting them. You know what else is up there? Um, natural gas. <laughs> and the companies that I am investing in uh, are in that general location. So I, I kind of like this. I like this setup going on here. But here's Bob Coleman. He says, silver investors, listen up here. Be careful listening to promoters and gold dealers spouting out terms like shortages and banks that are ready to collapse due to their naked short position. If there were absolute silver shortages, we would be in backwardation or seeing much lower EFP premiums than we are today. When you see these terms being used, it is normally in conjunction with trying to sell a service or a product. So I wanted to get that out there, and that's what Bob's opinion is, that there's no problem with the naked short position and that we're not necessarily seeing silver shortages uh, at this time, in his opinion. Cross border capital, interesting chart, economic recovery led by Asia, world shipping activity index, and the CRB commodity prices heading higher here over the past few months. Uh, so maybe we do have an economic recovery. I thought we were going into recession. I thought unemployment was going up. How does all of this fit together? 
uh, a lot of moving parts, and it is very dynamic and changing at all times. The macro landscape <clears throat> and the fiscal spending and liquidity coming into the markets, very difficult to get right. Um, I know a lot of people on the website, in the Discord channels, uh, the midweek, and, or I'm sorry, the, the question and answer sessions on the weekends that I do. Uh, a lot of us look at all this data. It's very hard to make uh, really good ends of it uh, and where potentially the data is suggesting that we are going. And that's where technical analysis and sticking to buying things that are cheap and undervalued are very uh, worthwhile because if you can take a patient approach and you buy all of the assets when they are cheap with large margin of safety, uh, or you're aggressive and you're trying to buy inflecting, you know, inflecting companies where they're inflecting from losing money to making money, that's where you get kind of the largest amounts of growth. Um, we have to, we can see that in the technical charts. And looking at some of these macro picture views, you've got all this conflicting data where it gets real mucky at best to see where we could potentially be going. But if I were to guess, and I'll just throw a guess here, I don't think we're gonna see a recession here soon uh, with the two year yield not falling. That's kind of where I look. So maybe we are strengthening and maybe commodity prices are strengthening with an economic recovery led by Asia, where we see higher prices in commodities yet again. Coming down to Oliver Grob, it says, we're going to need so much energy for the tech revolution. This is Hungry Hungry Robots. World estimated electricity demand in 2026, which is really not that far away. So dedicated AI centers, We've got cryptocurrencies and we've got conventional data centers. Uh, and the demand difference is almost 100% increase in electricity demand in terawatt hours from a little bit over 400 to a little bit over 800. Uh, that is crazy. That is absolutely crazy in how much electricity demand uh, all of these things account for here in such a short period of time. This is gonna get real interesting on where this energy is gonna come from. I don't think uranium can, can scale that fast. I think we are gonna hit natural gas like no other here. Uh, JP Morgan CEO Diamond says, chance of stagflation is higher than most people think. Yeah, I think so. there's a lot of people in the stagflation camp where we could see inflation with a slowdown in the economy. Very high likelihood, and that's what stagflation is. Peter Schiff says investors shouldn't buy dollars or sell gold because nominal treasury yields are rising. Yields are only rising because the federal government has lost control of the national debt and the Fed has lost control of inflation. This is bearish for the dollar and bullish for gold, in Peter Schiff's opinion. What's your guys' opinion on this? Um, are we going to see gold and yields go up together? We have noticed that there's been a disconnect since 2020. And gold generally followed where bond prices would go. But the disconnect is bond prices are going down and gold is going up. And I think Peter's probably right here. We could see yields go up and gold go up together. Robert says, <clears throat> oh, this is Robert Friedland. Um, forwarding this along. He says, copper longer term is the best commodity out there, says Carlisle's Jeff Curry. It says copper long term is the best commodity out there, in his opinion. Northstar, producer price index looks ready to lift off along with money supply. Hold on to your hats. And what the producer price index is, uh, is it's the producer prices on the front end. So think commodity prices. What it does, it goes through a producer price index and then it goes to the consumer price index on the back end. So this is kind of the leading indicator of inflation. And you can see the big moves here, the falling wedge, and then another breakout here in 2020. And then looks like here that we could potentially be breaking out again to the upside of this, of this wedge. 
Amy Nixon says this time is different. And we've got basically the overlay of the consumer price index today uh, overlaid on the 1966 to 1982 um, replay move. And if it does follow similarly to that, we would peak in 2028. And that very well could be the case. Um, I could easily see a peak in the late 2020s. Very well could. Uh, Isabel Net says margin debt. <clears throat> so margin debt is borrowed money to buy stocks. So margin debt continues to rise, remaining below extreme levels. This reflects the optimism among market participants and has the potential to drive further upward momentum in U.S. stock prices. So if we look at this, this is margin call. <clears throat> this is margin debt expansion versus contraction. So the S&P 500, you can see that there's some contractions in margin debt, and it correlates pretty well with the S&P 500 going lower. Right now, we are going up in margin debt. So people are taking on more margin, and it has been increasing over time. Uh, Logan says, it's all true, <clears throat> but it has gotten us off savage, savagely unhealthy low levels of inventory. So we've got 37% more inventory than last year of national single family homes. But uh, what he's saying is this is completely unhealthy down here, and we need to get to some inventory levels that are more healthy. And we're still below 2017, 2018, 2019, and even 2020 in our inventory absolute numbers. But yes, we're going on up, uh, and we could be getting to healthier levels. Resi Club says over the past 40 years, what one second. Guys. He says over the past 40 years, U.S. home prices have soared a staggering uh, almost 500%. Biggest home price gains between March of 84 and March of 24. So these are over the 40 year change in statewide home prices. You can see where the largest gains occurred in the. Um, the United States, and it mainly occurred uh, in the West and on the East Coast. So East Coast and West Coast, uh, or mountain range and to the West, uh, has been the highest increasers. Uh, so that's what it looks like there over the past 40 years. Don Durrett says, who runs Barter Town? Silver closed at $36.23 tonight in Shanghai. And then we've got a kilo at 1165, which is that 3623 an ounce. The current premium is 12% uh, in Shanghai versus New York Stock Exchange, uh, which is 3223 is what we have over here. So big difference in Shanghai versus New York. So here's Eric. He said the fame metals analyst David Jensen just said on Palisades Radio that SLV might blow up because there's not enough above ground physical silver that is available for trade anymore. What if GLD also blows up? Jordan once said that the creation of GLD and SLV sucked a lot of liquidity out of the miners because before GLD and SLV, people had no choice other than the miners to get exposure to the physical metals, other than holding the physical metals themselves. What will happen to the miners if GLD and SLV blow up and physical metals also become unobtainable for the plebs? They will fly, baby. I said this on my pin post in 2022 where he said, he said, gold price revaluation will screw over most people in the world except for a few physical gold owners because it is an act by central banks and sovereigns capturing productivity from common folks to write off their debts and finance government. Most small investor peeps are invested in miners, which are physical gold proxies. When physical gold becomes difficult to get or unavailable, and GLD gets exposed as bullcrap, miners will fly because they are the only gateway for the mass public to be exposed to physical gold's upside. And that is his opinion.
Uh, North Star, he's got it as the producer prices or the PPI rate of change increases, the upward pressure on gold, silver, precious metals increases. We are in a clear bull phase right now, regardless of any short-term pullbacks. So we've got an indicators in the bull run for the eight-year rate of change for the producer price index. We've got a downtrend line that's broken to the upside, clear breakout. We also coincidentally have a breakout uh, for gold pricing, which follows or leads, whichever one, leads follows the producer price index. You can see that in history, we've had these other simultaneous breakouts of gold and the PPI rate of change. Uh, and then the big mass of 1970s bull market is in full alignment with the eight-year rate of change for the PPI. So it looks really good for a potential move higher in gold, silver, and uh, other precious metals. So Oli S. Hansen says, commodities are firing at all cylinders or sectors this month with gains being led by nat gas, silver, and wheat. Developments that apart from subdued crude and fuel prices support the sticky inflation outlook. Note, mostly based <clears throat> on BCOM total return sub-indices. So huge moves uh, this month or month to date in May in a lot of different uh, commodity sectors. Big, big moves for, for the month. Another one with Oliver, he says, the best bulls are the quiet ones. And what we're seeing here is the commodities, the silent bull market that almost nobody cares about. Commodities outperforming so far in 2024, major cross asset performance rebased first January of 2024. So since January, commodities have outperformed uh, basically everything, debt, credit rates, USDFX, and equities. Commodities are outperforming. It's good. That's where we're at. And hopefully they continue to outperform. Like we've seen with the PPI above. Uh, gold is slowing down at this possible 13-year breakout line. Uh, needs three reactions to properly morph into existence. Uh, I'd say the lower risk, higher reward entry is right above that. See the rocket ship. And this is gold versus inflation. Uh, we've got the 13-year breakout line morphing into existence, and it's starting to try to break out here uh, at some point. It's up against resistance trying to break for gold versus inflation. And that is a high correlation to what the gold and silver mining companies do. It follows gold outperforming inflation, the CPI-adjusted gold price, so to speak. I've got the silver squeeze cup and handle projection for the big pattern. Uh, what do you think? <clears throat> And that's what I posted here is this big move to the upside uh, of potentially $530. I think I went over that last time. So that's where I'm going to end it, guys. Uh, so give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you like. And uh, that's all I've got for today. So hopefully you have a good day, guys. Catch you later. This is Finding Value.